Hey everyone, I hope you all are safe and doing good. So in the series of learning C++ programming language, uh, we have discussed functions in C++. Right, so from today only we are going to start OOPS concept in C++. Classes, objects, encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance and many more. Right, now before you know uh, discussing those concepts in deep, let me just help you to understand first what is object oriented programming, what is OOP and how this is different from the other approaches like POP procedure oriented programming right so this thing we will see in this video what is POP what is OOP or advantages and drawbacks of these two approaches although I have discussed these things in a previous lecture also that also I'll link in the side button you can check out that video also right in this video I'll just give you a brief about you know what is OOP right so now till now we uh, you know we have written so many programs without functions as well as with functions after you know introduced after you know uh, knowing about those functions we have uh, written some programs using functions as well right so till now i guess you know i can say that we were following that procedure oriented programming approach right there are different different paradigms to solve the problems structure uh, programming or pop or oop many things on main are pop and oop so these two things we'll discuss right so c is Processor oriented programming language POP. Now, first let's understand what is this POP? Processor oriented programming procedure means in this basically you know we focus on how to do the things, how to do the things, mainly focus on how procedure means how, right? So, in this approach, a program is basically we can say it's a collections of functions. We write so many functions and functions we call one function from another function and like this. These functions are interrelated and interdependent with each other and all. Right? So this kind of approach of solving a problem or writing a program is known as POP approach, procedure oriented programming. In this we uh, focus on how to do. We focus on the actions or we focus on the procedures or we can say we focus on the functions. Basically a program is having many functions. Right? And we have some like now, now the data data is declared separately we have some global data as well as we have some local data which is local to function right and how these functions are going to uh, you know uh, call or to be called <coughs> by passing arguments or i mean <coughs> the data is to be passed uh, using arguments <coughs> sorry <coughs> so if like if you visualize this thing something like this we have global data gd is global data and i am having suppose three functions this is function one and this function is having its own ld means local data so like this we are having three functions Every function is having its local data and some global data is there in our program, right? So, how data is to be passed here? Data is passed in arguments, right? So, it's like this is global data and this is accessible by all the functions. So, here we can say that in this approach, there is less data security. Why I am saying this? Because if one function is accessing this data, so this function can modify this data, this function can also modify this data, this function can also modify this data. So how this data is secure? Data is moving freely in the program. So there is less data security, right? That is why when we were solving, you know, when we were working on in that, in you know, on an organization level, right? On a large project or when we are uh, writing, you know, some designing some software, there we follow OOP approach rather than this approach. For simple program it's okay but it's not like that we are just writing these simple programs addition of two numbers factorial uh, happening series and all no obviously the, the, these programs are just to you know uh, just to make you understand the simple logic or the basics of programming obviously after that you have to work on large projects you have to solve real world problems you have to make softwares so there you will be using OOP approach right because in this less data security is there and there are so many functions and all the functions are like interrelated like this 
and all these functions are interrelated with each other. Right? This function is calling this function, this function is calling, calling this function, something like this. Right. So, there is so many interdependency in these functions. So, if you want to change in one function, then you have, maybe you will have to change in some other functions also or, or it will definitely affect the other functions as well. Or if you want to add some more function, that also will be difficult. Right. So, for solving a large problem, obviously this is not a correct approach. There are so many drawbacks in this POP approach. Right. But one thing I can say like it's easy to learn. Definitely. But here one more problem is what? When to pass the data in these functions, then these functions needs to know the structure of the data. What kind of data is to be passed here. Right? And if you change in that structure of the data, then you need to change maybe in many functions also. Right. So this is also one drawback of this POP approach. And because of this interdependency in these functions, it's difficult to understand the program, difficult to maintain, difficult to debug sometimes, right? And for more scalable, you know, projects, we can't use this approach because of these limitations. So the next thing is, we now comes to OP approach, object oriented programming approach. Now, what is this approach? This approach basically focus on what to do, not how to do what to do right now object oriented means the more you know uh, focus is on objects this programming approach is revolved or oriented basically around object now what is this object in real world if i say like this uh, pen it's an object my laptop my camera cycle or my you know table chair these are like real world objects or entities we can say so objects are nothing but real world entities Right. And these real world entities we can represent in programming with the help of this OOP approach. Same we can model this real world entities in programming as an object as well. Right. So we have concept of object classes and many, you know, OOPs concepts are there. Right. So basically this approach, OOP approach is to model real world scenarios in programming. But how? This line is very important. If you go to this line, oops, concepts are sorted. But after, you know, uh, discussing all these oops concepts, the four pillars of oops, writing so many programs, then you will get the meaning of this line. And what is that line? OOP concept. These are, you know, used to model real world scenarios in programming. Right. So if you are not getting the meaning of this line right now, it's okay. After, you know, writing so many programs and discussing all the concepts of UOP, you will get this line. Right. Like, what are real world problems? Like, maybe you are um, uh, developing any software regarding like library management system or regarding student management system or uh, hospital management system or these kind of softwares. Right. Like any uh, e-commerce websites we have. So, these are, these software has to be made to solve some real world problems. Right. So behind the scene, there are so many, you know, there is so much code. So we can't, in that case, we can't, you know, follow that POP approach because there would be lots of functions. Every function is interrelated and interdependency and also that would be very difficult to code right in that approach. But in OOP, we can model easily this thing in programming with the help of classes and objects and other OOPs concepts. Right. So the main thing here is those functions and the related data, I mean the data and the functions which will be performing some operations on that data would be bound in a single unit and that is like basically object. So here what I want to say is here we have a function and the data. This would be wrapped within a single unit, right? Some functions we have and the data, the related data, I mean these functions would be performed operations on this data. So that would be wrapped in a single unit. So this is basically this one, this complete is known as object. This is known as object. And they can also interact with, with each other using message passing. Right, those also, you know, that thing also we'll see. Fine, now, now this wrapping of the functions and data within a single unit is basically known as encapsulation, right? And objects are nothing but real world entities, right? And classes, now classes are simply blueprint for these objects, right? 
Now let's suppose uh, I have one object like this pen. I have this pen. Right. So this object is having some property. Right. Like or maybe some attributes also like it, it is black in color. Properties are it can write. Right. So something like this. And suppose like me, I'm an object. Right. So every like everyone in my class, in the 60 students, these are objects. Each are having their own attributes and properties. Attributes like, you know, they're like maybe number of eyes, one nose, hair, hair color, and all these are attributes and properties are what they can do. I mean, like I can code, I can sing, or I can do something like I can cook. So these are the functions or these are the, you know, uh, properties that I can do. These are some tasks I can do. So these are like functions, right? And the class is like a blueprint. So class is like, we can say like human, human is a class. So from this blueprint, we can drive many objects like Jenny or many other objects as well. These are objects, right? Like a blueprint means um, in a construction, the map. When you go to go, uh, go to that architect, then uh, you know, there would be one map and that has to finalize map that uh, construction would be started. So one map you have that is blueprint and the actual building that would be object. Now you got classes and objects. In detail, you will see in uh, next video, right? So, I hope now the basic idea you got. Now, what are the advantages of this object oriented programming? Now, here, the, this, this, the data and the functions are binded with each other closely, right? So, data will not move freely here in the program. So, more data security is there. And to secure the data here, we have specifiers, public, private, protected, right? If you want to make your data public it means available to everyone you can make that public if you want to make your data private you can make that private using access specifier right because you can implement abstraction here right abstraction means in real life uh, we have like uh, there, there is a switchboard so when once you uh, you know once you switch on that press the button press the switch to on that fan that's it fan would be on and it's like you don't know what is happening behind the scene. There are so many wires, how the electricity is to be passed and all. So that is kind of abstraction. You have the remote of AC, you just switch on the AC and that's it. You don't know what is happening behind the scene. Right? Behind that, you know, under that remote what you have. You just see the interface, those buttons only. You just press the button and the functionality would be done according to you. Right? So this is kind of abstraction. You don't know the implementation, you only know what you need to know, the simple things, right? Not the implementation or the other details. So that is kind of abstraction that we can achieve here with OOP approach. And reusability is more here, reusability of the code because of we have inheritance, one concept, right? So you can create a like new class uh, from that existing class. Right, and you can inherit the features, I mean the functions and all from that already existed class, right? So reusability is more here. One more thing is, so it's like uh, we can use those already built in classes in some other applications, right? But we cannot apply this OOPS concept. We cannot apply this OOPS approach to solve every problem. It's not universal thing. You can't apply this everywhere. There are some problems to solve them. You have to use POP approach only. Right. And it's a little bit tricky to learn these concept. Right. And sometimes uh, the program would be a little bit lengthy if you follow this approach. So it would be there, you know, the performance would be uh, performance would be affected a little bit. And it can consume more memory and more CPU resources than POP sometimes because see, these objects contains both functions and data together. So sometimes it, it requires more time or more space to create such objects, right? So there are some limitations as well of this OOP approach as well as some advantages over POP approach. But definitely when you are working on that organizational level, working on large project, you are creating softwares, then definitely you follow this approach like OOP approach because of the advantages you have, right? And one by one, each concept now we'll be discussing later. The next video would be about classes and objects, right? Proper program, I'll show you. Fine. So now I guess you got the basic idea what is OOP and what is POP and what is the difference and all.
If you have any question, you can just let me know in the comment section. Right. Now, that's it for this video. Now, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.